Okay, this is Phil Escott, and with a channel of the same name, I'm Kay, otherwise full name Kathleen. I don't answer to Kathy, Kay or Kathleen. And my channel is called Breaking the Spells, which is about undoing brainwashing and misinformation, basically brain rape about information regarding your health. We have a couple of pertinent topics. The first one we'd like to go into is Phil Escott, my favorite carnivore. And before you introduce yourself, Phil, I'd like to say the reason you're my favorite carnivore is because I think you come off as the most sincere, kind, what you call allowing and authentic, and your information's really good. And then you not just have the carnivore aspect, but the what we could call current, uh, uh, current event aspects. And please um, keep in mind, um, we'd like to hear all your contact information in the beginning and then a reminder at the end. And any links that you would like to send to me that I can put in the description about pertinent videos, um, you can email me and we'll put them in. How's that? That's great, Kathleen. Thank you. Okay. Very much. I'm, I'm, I'm very flattered that, that I'm your favorite carnivore. That's oh, really I do have to clarify that. Favorite human carnivore. I've had oh, yeah. three dogs in my life out of several that have been my favorite carnivores. So you're my favorite human carnivore. You're only limited by the dogs. Thank you very much. I'm you're welcome. welcome. That's a high honor. <laughs> okay, so Phil, tell us about yourself, why you're carnivore, what's most important to you. I know there's many aspects that you go into about life and about circadian rhythm and energetics and spirit and all that kind of stuff. What do you want to say? Well, I, I, if nobody's um, if nobody's come across me before, I guess uh, my story is kind of um, quite convoluted with a, a, a crazy approach to this carnivore lifestyle. From um, starting off, my, mostly interested in um, spirituality, yoga, meditation, um, th that kind of thing, and getting into health through there, or what I thought was health, with lots of uh, decades of vegetarianism which which landed me in terrible trouble and um it really the turning point for me i suppose was 2010 when i i was completely crippled with um psoriatic arthritis the signs had been there for decades but i didn't know i didn't take any notice but i couldn't ignore it anymore in 2010 when i had you know two ankles that i couldn't walk on one knee and um, they were blown up like balloons, tremendous agony, lots of other symptoms, lots of metabolic and autoimmune issues. So, of course, with what I thought I knew, having been a, a vegetarian for so long, I thought I've got to go even more vegetarian. So I went into I did that too. Yeah, yeah. So I went into veganism and ended up raw and juicing and stuff. And all that did was make me emaciated and gave me kidney stones. But um, I was still inflamed. So I had to rethink and I came across a, a well, I, I suppose the two big influences were two doctors, Natasha Campbell McBride with her GAPS diet and Jack Cruz with, um, you know, he was talking more about diet in those days. He doesn't really anymore. He's all about light. And he's, I, I, I take his point actually, because if you understand light, you understand diet anyway. Um, light is food. Yeah, right? sorry? Light is food. Light is nutrition. Absolutely. And, and just understanding the seasons and circadian rhythms tell you what you should eat in any location anyway. It's actually it's quite a good way to look at it. Um, so eventually I found my way to uh, keto, you know, through the whole paleo and then keto transition. And pretty much fixed it because I was working on all sorts of other things, all the lifestyle stuff, emotional stuff, that kind of thing. And wrote a book. I think it was 2014. Um, uh, arthritis the best thing that ever happened to me because it was I mean it taught me pretty much everything I know now and a few little niggling issues left but uh, by 2015 I, I, I went carnivore and have only eaten a couple of mouthfuls of plants here and there since probably could count them on the fingers of one hand and um, it's that's it's been amazing i mean the 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 benefits when you give up your essential five a day are quite extraordinary even even from keto people who give up the last little bits of spinach and broccoli or something you see especially those <laughs> yeah well yeah yeah absolutely you know then you see sort of thyroid and hormonal and ms clearing up i mean it's it's quite amazing um 
of course, everybody thinks you're completely mad when they first hear about it, but then didn't we all? We all thought that was nuts. If somebody had told me that in 1995 or something, I'd have thought they were completely barking mad. Um, although it would have saved me a hell of a lot of problems over the next 15 years. Uh, yeah, so that's really my journey into it. And it's, it's funny to now to be sort of branded the carnivore guy because that's not my, my sort of focus of interest really, or it wasn't. I mean, it's great fun to talk about it, um, apart from with vegans. But um, it, it's, uh, it's all the other sort of little things that go along with it. But then when you see that they're all just part of the same ancestral disconnects, yes, you can see how it all ties in. You know, so carnivory, I feel it's a beautiful part of anybody's um, healing journey. That's how I came to it anyway. Wouldn't you say the greatest objection from the vegans slash vegetarians, especially the vegans, is they do not understand that pasture raising animals is a lot healthier for the planet than monocropping. What would you like to say about monocropping? I have a lot to say. I'd rather hear it from you right now. Well, I mean, even when I was vegan, if somebody had come up and told me exactly what was going on, I'd have gone, that's obvious. Because it is. You know, you, yes. you, want, to plant, you want to plant some crops, so you, 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 you t cut, cut down all the trees and hedgerows, you clear the land, you start tilling the soil, which ruins the soil. Um, by then, you've cleared out most of the native species and killed a whole load of other ones. And then you plant some crops which are, as you say, monocrops, which then deplete the soil further. You spray them with pesticides. <laughs> and I mean, it's pesticide. Think of the word. It's not accidental vegans. It's done on purpose. And the ones that escape that get chewed up in the combine harvesters. Meanwhile, the pesticides are running off into the, into the rivers and, and killing fish. And then we get this horrible food, processed food from those fields that causes all the chronic disease in the first place and off we go to Big Pharma. Um, it's, a, it's an amazing business model, really. But when you see how many animals it's killing and maiming and how if you just reintroduce ruminant animals to the land, they restore the soil and they're actually, if you do believe in climate, human-made climate, uh, you know? Yeah, from warming but, to change now. Right. I know. Well, yeah, well, we'll leave that one for the moment. But even if you believe it, um, they, these, these, um, grass, these farms with grass-fed cattle, they become carbon neutral or even carbon negative anyway. Exactly. So you just have to say that, and anybody without severe brainwashing will just go, well, that makes sense completely. But the answers they come up with, it, it, it just shows that it's a, a completely brainwashed cult. It's very dangerous, very dangerous cult, I think, veganism is. They're, the they're victims. Sides. They're actually victims. So we yeah, have to pay them. Not only, not only the, the victims, but, but they're foot soldiers for the big corporations, spreading that, that, that nonsense that creates all the billions for the oh. agri and pharma in, industries. And, and no, we, you know, I, I often get criticized for vegan bashing, but I don't. I, I, I bash veganism. I don't bash vegans. We've all been vegan, you know. You most and I of were us. both vegetarian or vegan for 20 years. Yeah, there you go. You know, we, we all get caught in that. It's a very, very powerful illusion. And I always think of myself as, as very, very open-minded and always looking to rebel. And it took me 30 years to see through it. And I should have seen through it in just that little, if somebody had said what I just said now to me, I'd have seen through it straight away. I mean, you combine that obviously with the, uh, the story of where this modern veganism in the West came from, from, um, Oh, yeah. yeah, tell it, Phil. Tell it. Who started that, Phil? Well, you know, there's, there's this, this young girl, was it about the 1860s, Ellen G. White, and she was a religious nut, and she had these visions that everybody should eat a, a Garden of Eden diet. And uh, she started producing these pamphlets and stuff, telling people not to eat meat because it enraged the sexual desires. Right. And the family hired a, a, a young guy. He was like 12 years old or so to help with the typesetting. And um, he obviously got brainwashed into it and he grew up to have all these crazy sanatoriums where they did these absolutely useless interventions and fed them all on these grains. That's right, that's right. On and purpose, to bring the sexual fire down. Exactly. Those and then, same then, people don't even like, I mean, caffeine, even garlic might be too stimulating. Yeah, oh God, yeah. yeah. Well, Wally and I have heard it. They say it definitely is. But um, 
yeah and so he he grew up to produce, to have all these cereal companies and whatever or cereal factories and That's right. and um his name harvey kellogg and so basically when you eat your sunshine breakfast of cornflakes you have to realize that they were originally designed to stop you masturbating exactly and, that was the great evil when you when you realize that it's just it's so hilarious you know you combine that with the crop thing and you don't even need to go into the health of diet. It just becomes obvious. Right. And then what's happened since then? All the chronic diseases. We didn't start eating meat when the chronic diseases came in. So you combine all of that and then it's gone. I think the Ooh. whole illusion of veganism, vegetarianism is gone. Beyond that, it's brainwashing. Which one is the bad diet, Phil? Oh, veganism. Come there on. Yeah, they're there always something funny, isn't it? Carnivory is the fad diet. Tell that I, to the Inuits. <laughs> I have a playlist called Vegan Misinformation. And when I speak to people about this subject, and I only have so many minutes, that's where I refer them because it has that whole story. But I wanted you to say the sketch of it right here. Well, my fav my so favorite crazy. one for linking people to is, uh, I think it's 59 seconds on YouTube, Ted Nugent Vegan or something. It's Ted from Ted Nugent, the guitarist, his, his interview on Joe Rogan, and it's called Vegans Kill Everything. And he runs through that. You know, if you want to kill the most animals, go vegan. And off he goes for like under a minute and he nails it. But then, of course, even if you send a vegan to that, they just go, oh, well, he's a guitarist. What does he know? Oh, well, he was convicted of pedophilia or something. He wasn't. I mean, back in the rock and roll days, he, he had some young girl, probably, as they all did, who, who yeah. was, was actually of age. But they consider her too young or something. I'm not getting into that. Whether whether I'd have done it or not is is, is I wouldn't have done. You know, I'd, even in my rock and roll days, I didn't do that kind of thing. But they they will take any way to discredit somebody who says anything like that. Send me other, that link, that link, or any other pertinent links that we can put in the description. The way I'm going to do it is I'll put the title and then the link. It's such a cool one though. It's so eloquent for about a minute, and you just go, "Well done." And then you look at him. I mean, it, He's just eaten tons of meat and lived on a ranch all his life. And he's over 70 now. He looks fantastic. He certainly no, doesn't look like a vegan. I don't remember that short video, but I have seen him. And it's come up before, but I guess in a longer version. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. But, but he, whoever you link people to, they'll, they'll start to do some ad hominem attack and start to criticize that particular person rather than what they were saying. So even if you link them to some kind of scientist, it's always, oh, well, they're not that the right scientist or they didn't go to the right university or, or they're paid by the meat industry. <laughs> this That's is right. one thing I get, I get accused of, you know? I mean, I wish I did. I wish I did, but I don't. Nobody, nobody in the carnivore world gets paid by anybody. Right. What about, okay, so we, we have Kellogg's cereal, his sanitarium, and all of the, the push for literally cereal. And, you know, breakfast being the most important meal. And that's really when you're supposed to be pooping and peeing and cleansing and going and get your food, right? I mean, yeah, there's, oh, I don't, my brain is going so many directions. For example, look at the dogs, which actually our digestion is most like dogs because of the, the size of the stomach is almost identical relative to the size of the bean. Uh, we don't have a big colon, near, neither do they. They have a little bit more teeth for ripping and tearing. But, um, and by the way, I'm not a carnivore, but that is the primary part of my diet, which is animal food. And I'm very careful with my vegetables. Of, I, you know, I hard, I'm an I'm a information junkie, so we sort this out all the time. I'm not, we're not screwing around. Yeah, but, but Kathleen, we, we, we don't have fangs and claws. And we don't, you know, we can't rip our own prey to pieces. And look how strong, yes, elephants, are. <laughs> and look how strong elephants are. You get all that yeah. nonsense. Oh my gosh, we're not ruminants. They we're want us to be ruminants and neutered. Yeah, yeah. Mentally, physically, ruminants. sexually, every way. They want us to be neutered. But the, but the modern day vegans don't know that. That's not their intention. It's where, where it started. And well, they just use these ridiculous propaganda films, don't they? They'll watch one or two of them mm -hmm. and suddenly they're an expert and they start telling you to go do your research. They, right. they think I haven't seen these films in 30 years of looking into diet. I mean, take this, this recent Game Changers film. There's plenty of debunks about it out there. I, I can't mm -hmm. encourage anyone who's watched Game Changers and thought that it was anything apart from a great big long um, advert for pea protein isolate. If anybody's watched that and got taken in by it, see how the athletes have failed, 
see how you know it, it's since and and how they were never that great in the first place people dip into athletes tend to dip into veganism they get out pretty quickly and they never built their skills on it and i have a good friend called tim sheath and he was in um i think it was um cowspiracy or forks over knives one of them um or what the health actually maybe i've seen them all but tim was in one of them he used to be called the vegan prince and he had a, a clothing company and he was world champion free runner and he had a vegan clothing company called ethics without the eye and um he started talking to me quite some time ago and he said my health has gone downhill and since he's come out about it and he asked for his um <laughs> his contribution to be taken out of game changers because he realized yeah. what what nonsense it was and how it had ruined his health and when you see this and all these vegans failing all the youtubers failing and you can see what's going on i I would love to see it completely blown up. I really would, because I think it's very dangerous. There's people feeding their children like that, which is really child abuse. They don't know it, but it is, you know. It's inadvertent, the, right? Uh, inadvertent. Inadvertent child abuse, yeah, yeah. They mean well, but you, when, you see, when you've seen enough two-year-olds with blackened teeth and horrendous underdevelopment and even rickets and stuff, you, you, you have no more patience with that sort of nonsense. If, if somebody wants to eat that tasteless food, go ahead, fine, but don't inflict it on your kids. That reminds me of uh, Tristan's, one of his favorite terms, kibble. And uh, we, uh, we rescued a dog that was previously uh, only fed kibble and the crappiest kibble. And he had to have had rickets. He is bow leg and it has an underbite. And uh, another topic is he was, uh, he was neutered just before we got him, which rescue organization, organizations do. I have a playlist called The Hazards of Spaying and Neutering. This is why he had no testosterone and he lost his hair, a lot of his hair. So we've had to try to mitigate that as much as possible. And I will never spay or neuter another animal again. Quite right. It's just more arrogance from, from yeah. humans, isn't it? We have yeah. to interfere with what nature <laughs> provided. Oh, look, God got the penis wrong. Let's chop the foreskin off. Oh, yeah. More neutering. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. It happens all over. They just do it with so many things. Oh, that appendix, you don't need it. Let's whip it out. Gallbladder, you don't need that. Let's whip it out. I mean, you know, I'm not coming down on all of modern medicine because if I crash a motorcycle, I'm going to be very, very glad they're there. But in, in the field of chronic disease, you and I know it's, it's you've got to run away. Otherwise, you've got no chance. Well, in that, um, that spader, spaying and neutering issue, besides the whole kibble issue, which you'll never see in my house, <laughs> any kind of kibble for anybody, um, besides that, um, I under, we all understand why the rescue organizations who deal with all the animals that shouldn't have been born or aren't wanted or aren't treated right or lost or coming. My biggest worry with these economy coming uh, is the animals that have no choice in the matter whatsoever. And how many are gonna lose their homes and be miserable and be euthanized and just suffer. But uh, the back to their, their reasoning is logical, but it's actually quicker and easier to um, keep the gonads intact and still sterilize. Like a vasectomy for a boy, removal of the uterus or, um, or you know, tying the tubes for a female, um, actually is a smaller surgery, but because the veterinary organizations don't readily teach that as you know, part of their what, protocols, whatever, I'm sure there's a better word for it, um, they will generally do one or the other. In our area, in, uh, in the Mid-South here, there's one vet within 50 miles that I know of that will do that instead of taking everything out. But that is an alternative. And it was really based on people being irresponsible with their animals. And that was their excuse. They're gonna have all these unborn uh, dogs and cats. And I get that, but there are other ways. We would never let one of ours impregnate or get impregnated because they're always safe and, you know, and all that. And, but uh, that, is a, that is a big issue. And it all, it all kind of ties in. It's not started by Kellogg and his prophetess and all that. But still, uh, it, it shows um, that we need to think. And once, I, once we realize that, it's like, oh my gosh, I got to make a playlist on that. And I will never do that to an animal again. And if I had a male and a female and didn't want them to breed, I would just um, sterilize, but not uh, completely remove, not remove any gonads of either animal. 
besides the toxicity and the trauma of the surgery itself. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of nutritional questions I have for you. Maybe I should just try it. I have notes here, which are my, look at this. You saw the outline I gave you, I expanded it. It turned into this. <laughs> oh, God. Just a little flat page that wouldn't fit. And this one where I filled in the blanks and highlighted. <laughs> I'm going to try to shoot from the hip. What's the biggest nutritional complaint you get? It's about vitamin C, right? Right? A nutritional complaint. From, um, from the people who think you cannot be carnivore. To debunk the carnivore diet, yes. Well, um, well, you know, there's a few. But, uh, no fiber. They, people are, are convinced that there are certain nutrients in... Um, in plants that we can't get from animal foods, which isn't true. Um, the, the vitamin C thing is interesting because I've sort of changed my mind a little bit on this recently, but by and large, if you're healthy and you go to a carnivore diet, you won't need extra vitamin C. You know what most people don't know? When there's a sugar and you know, all these uh, carbs and starches at best, they could be worse. They could be fructose, which is even worse for the liver. But they're all strung together, strung together glucose molecules. So when they break down, if it's bread or a potato or a noodle, it's still sugar. Yeah. And what does sugar, what happens when vitamin C from food is trying to get into the cells and there's a sugar molecule around because they're so similar? What happens? Well, it, it blocks. The path. Yeah, it blocks the pathway. So right. The this is the thing. Some people are. That might need a bit more. This is something I have a great friend called Ellie Overton. He has a, a channel yeah. called EO Nutrition, and he's he's quite a genius. I don't have a scientific mind, but um, I do see some people say transitioning to carnivore, and they're absolutely fine straight away. And some people have more problems. I don't believe this is the problem with the diet. Now I sound a bit like a vegan there, but with with veganism, the longer you go on, the more supplements you need. With carnivore, the longer you go on, the fewer supplements you need. So that shows to me that it's balancing things out. Some people come into uh, carnivore in a certain state that they might need some extra vitamin C. Nobody, as far as I've ever seen, has come down with actual scurvy. I've not right. seen anybody with their teeth falling out and their eyes bleeding, you know? But mm -hmm. I, there are some little subclinical things that apparently um, Elliot is seeing that suggests that there is a vitamin C deficiency, but still that's not the majority. Um, there are probably far more people with a vitamin C deficiency who eat pasta and donuts all day, you know? Yeah, because it's blocking the vitamin C. That's why their dosages have to be so high, which don't even get me started on the synthetic vitamin C. Another thing that can push the natural vitamin C from food out of the way, because the synthetic is usually from cornstarch and sulfuric acid. Ascorbic yeah. acid is a piece of the vitamin C molecule. Yeah. yeah. And I think its only advantage is um, the high acid, which you could get from vinegar. The high acid, when they use it for their immune system, can help stimulate the immune system. And, but but uh, what is it going to say? The acid itself is useful. And, of course, we rely so much. What's the first place we disinfect what's coming in? Stomach with stomach acid. And so, oh, you know, I do work in health food. I used to own a health food store, and thanks to the, the with, what is nothing compared to what's coming, the 2008 economy and my customers who lost so much money. Uh, we've already had our 401k hit hard, but back then, most of my customers lost most of it. And so at the end of a long lease after that, I decided to close it. Well, I, we were in the black, and all the bills were paid, and credit was still good. Um, but uh, when I bring that up, uh, the vitamin. Oh my gosh! So I still work. I'm more or less semi-retired. I kind of work for fun, um, still in health food, and I will never mention exactly where I work because I on in, in, on camera because it has to be completely unrelated to my channel. I don't monetize. I'm no. I don't have to answer to anybody. And also by not uh, monetizing, I kind of fly under the radar a little bit. You know, I don't get the attention from the people who might wipe out my um my videos so or my channel so i i encounter this vitamin c thing all the time i just go oh, you know it is it is so misunderstood which relates me to the other question the other probably most vulnerable vitamins that we know of 
that are sensitive to heat that I still have questions on. If I don't have my own lab to test cooking at an exact temperature for an exact length and an exact medium, I don't know. And no one can really know. If you don't do that, you can't really know um, how many nutrients are ruined by the heat. We don't know. Right? Yeah. Well, you know, that's, uh, people, people argue about this all the time, don't they? Uh, some people yeah. think that it, it makes it more available. Some people say they're ruined. Um, but I, I, think, I think one important thing that we haven't mentioned here is that it's not about what you eat. It's about what you can absorb. And exactly. if you're eating, eating a whole load of crappy food that ruins the gut integrity, you're not absorbing it anyway. The people who need supplements the most are probably just peeing and pooing them all out. So if because they're they lucky if they don't get back in the bloodstream and then set off that autoimmune um, reaction. Yeah, that's yeah, where I think that, autoimmunity comes from, really. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think they have. I think they have a place, but I think you have to know what you're doing. And I think it, you know, I, I've changed my mind on it a lot. For the, I will, will say, for ninety percent of people, if you just go to a, a, a strict carnivore diet or a carnivore adjacent diet, if you know what you're doing with plants. Um, that's absolutely fine. You'll be totally fine. But if some people come in with certain predispositions or certain deficiencies, it can be worth tweaking it. But I think it would be good to, to, to talk to a very, very good carnivore aware nutritionist um, who, who understands about how to balance that up and doesn't just hit it with a blunderbuss effect of just take this massive handful of pills, you know, mm -hmm. which I think we all used to do back in the days when we were vegetarian because we felt so bad and we thought that was the only way to get through it anyway. <clears throat> but if you, um, if, if you, if you eat, if you're worried about it at all, just add some organ meats in and stuff, exactly. add some fish in, add some bone broth in and you've got it covered. I, some people survive on ribeye steaks. Well, thrive on ribeye steaks only and look mm -hmm. fantastic 20 years in. Even is some that don't do grass fed, which is like, Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is the but but this is the the puzzle that we're all trying to work through. Mm -hmm. But I do know that that if you cut the plants out, particularly if you're sick, you you will get the most stunning results. And then, by all means, add them in after a while and see what you can what you can take. If you if you miss them, I don't miss them. Well, I lie. Potatoes and chocolate. If I yeah, potatoes and chocolate. If I could have buttery roast potatoes all day long, <laughs> no, I would do with tons of butter. But uh, and nothing else attracts me at all. I don't. I don't miss anything else. No, it's it's just so nice when you're when when, when you have that simplicity of just putting a, a joint in the oven or a, or a fry a steak up. It's fantastic. So I think I think that's the thing. It's the most nutrient dense diet, which which then seals the gut, and so you absorb the nutrients that are there rather than having your gut ripped to bits by plants, so you're not absorbing them. Um, and that's the important thing. I have two quotes that I say all the time that I made up. One is, you can't be any, I don't know why my camera makes me look so pink. It's like disturbing. I don't even want to look at myself. It's so disturbing. But um, let me try the lights here. Yeah. Anyway, uh, then it's, I don't know what's going on. We, I'm in a blue room by the, where the computer is, and this room is horrible for filming. I like to go in my orange and gold room. Yeah, anyway. Um, uh, the, the issue of the gut permeability is, uh, it's like, that's why I have a playlist called fiber, which is not pro fiber. What are your two quotes? Yeah. What's that? Oh, the two quotes. Yeah. The two quotes were, I think that's about sleep deprivation. We've got about four hours of sleep for the last week. There's a like crazy stuff going on. Um, one is you cannot be any healthier than your digestion. And so I say the, the digestion rules, that's part two. Part three is, but the liver is king. And where, why do you want a liver as a supplement as, you know, as the, the actual organ meat? Because that's where nutrients are stored. And that's, you know, that's why you can survive on liver. Hopefully not too fatty of a liver from an animal who was fed grain, but um, you can tell grass fed liver. Now I hate liver. I do use some grass-fed beef liver, desiccated, freeze-dried, capsule uh, as my organ meat per se. Um, but the rest of the household, the dogs eat it raw, and and the husband he will cook it lightly, and they eat it. And I get also I won't go into that. I, I'm going to redo my raw pet food 
video, but when there was a shortage of things and people weren't allowed to order, like ordering organ meat, I kind of held back on that because um, I, it's too confusing because my diet for my animals got much more elaborate, full of much more organ meat, and even reduced the, the very minuscule amount of carbs down to virtually none. Um, uh, I just held off. I'm waiting to see, like, I don't want to seem unrealistic to people, you know. But along the nutritional questions that I have for you, um, I want to get back to the organ meat question. Uh, but tell us kind of in general what you eat. What, what do you consume drink-wise, food-wise, apparently no supplements? Give us a quick sketch of that, your, your, the categories of foods that you eat or drink. Um, well, I, I, I survive mostly. I would say... 50% of my diet is ground beef or ground lamb made into burgers. I love it. It's really easy. The kids make it. They, they keep well. I can send the missus off to work with them packed up. You know, they're so simple and easy. Um, steaks. I eat steaks, um, lamb chops, roast lamb and roast beef. I think that kind of covers the organ meats. I, I, I tend to steer clear of chicken and pork, although the rest of the family eat some. Chicken is pretty much just protein. Yeah, yeah, chicken is protein, but it's also walking corn. That's right. Yeah, because they, they feed it a load of corn, and, and it's, it's just, the, these chickens are supposed to be eating bugs and worms and mice. Right. If they did, and if I could find some properly free-range chickens, I'd love to eat it. Uh, I do now and again. It, it's not a big deal. Um, pork tends to affect me more, which is a shame, because... Um, I love crackling. That's fantastic. You know, pork belly is beautiful, but the family eat it and I might have a bit every now and again. It's not, I, things don't really affect me anymore particularly, but I don't really want to push it. Um, so it's mostly uh, f um, muscle meats from ruminant animals. And if we have to get um, the supermarket meat, but it, it's, it's still pretty good here. I mean, it's, it's 90% better than US. much better yeah. than the US. It's much better in, in, in the UK, but still I don't particularly like the fat. And that's where a lot of the sort of problems are stored. So what we do is um, if we can't afford to buy the very expensive grass-fed stuff at the local farm, which is amazing, um, we Excuse go down. Excuse me there. one second. Charles? Um, Lilu is hoarding a toy. The old one is harassing and teasing the puppy. And her growling... It's all BS. It's, it's a head trip. And the growling is starting to get louder, and she's right here, and so we need intervention. She'll go <laughs> take one of their toys and say, I'm older, you can't have it. And anyway, kids, you know. So, yeah, so, so what we do is we go to the, the grass, the place that does the beautiful grass-fed stuff, and we just come back with bags and bags of fat, which costs almost nothing because everybody's frightened of it. And then you can use that, you know, you can put an ordinary supermarket joint in there and roast it with all that beautiful fat chopped up around the outside and it goes crispy and then you can drain the tallow off and then you've got that for cooking other stuff. So that's what we do. Organ meats. Well, I eat fish now and again, oysters every now and again, um, maybe once a week or once every couple of weeks, I'll have a binge on some oysters. Um, I don't mind them. I, I don't particularly like them, but I, I know what they do. I know how it's. Yeah you know, probably the easiest way to get some complete nose to tail raw animal inside. They're, you. they're filling in a lot of blanks. Yeah. Yeah. They're really filling, yeah. That's like, you could, you could do oysters or really high quality shellfish and then just muscle meat. I think you'd be fine because the sea, I always preach the sea is where all the minerals, however old this earth is, you could argue all over the place with that. However old it is, it's the mineral, the nutrients have been going down there. Where did society start Phil? Inland? No. They started on the seashores, right? Or riverbeds because they were fertile. So all the animals and all the plants were loaded with minerals. Absolutely. Not, they weren't inland and they're less inland, but then being stripped, especially by monocropping, right? They're taking them out till it's just dirt without, without the proper minerals. And then even my concern I was going to ask you about is inland... Uh, animal food still won't have what it would have if it would that's why this, the seafood's good it won't have what you would have if you lived closer to the water where civilizations started out so 
that that's that's really a good plan and i i can handle all kinds of seafood but um uh but i just can't eat the organ meat not i hate it i have this aversion to it tasting gamey i just can't do it yeah I know what you mean. my missus who was veggie for 20 years she she can just scoff anything like tripe really? brains, um you know if there's wow. a chicken she won't even start on it until everybody's finished and then she'll eat the whole carcass, you know? Yeah. She doesn't do it so much anymore, but she did when she first transitioned. She must My husband can do that. But, but she much prefers organ meats. Um, liver, I don't like lamb's liver, uh, but a beef, beef liver and ox liver, sometimes it's really nice. Sometimes it's just okay. It's very rare I'll make a whole meal out of it. But sometimes you get one that's really nice and I will, I'll eat a load of it. But what I tend to do is cook it and then just take a little bit out and heat it up every day and have it like a starter. So I think, right, you well, know, kind of like a supplement almost, right? Yeah. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. So I'll have a few mouthfuls of that and then a big steak or something. And that's, that's generally how it works out. I don't eat eggs at the moment. I, I, I have crazies on them. And when I do, I eat a whole load of them, but mm -hmm. usually only the yolks. My body. Have you tried the yolks raw? Do you ever try the yolks raw? So all the, yeah. Phenomenal nutrients are totally intact. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've done. I mean, what I prefer is is cooked a little bit, but really runny. And then you sort of pour it over a burger or something, you know? Yeah. And that's delicious. That's fantastic. Dairy, I seldom do. Um, I've had crazes on it, but when, for the first four years or so being carnivore, I, I ate a lot of butter as well. You know, I'd have a steak and put a load of butter on it. Was any of it raw? Huh? Was any of it raw? Not much. The no. odd mouth here and there. I'm I'm not I'm not a great raw meat eater. It's okay. It's oh, raw right. butter. Raw butter. Oh raw butter, yeah, yeah. Yeah, quite a lot of it. Yeah, not always, but so, mostly. Um <clears throat> so we had um I, I was eating a load of butter and I didn't really notice any issues until one day when the missus had to give up dairy from orders from um our friend Jophia Clements of Paleo Medicina. Oh yeah. Yeah, and and supplements, blow, right? Yeah, to try and blow out her um, her Graves' disease, which we've done. But she said no dairy at all, and I said, "Oh, okay, butter's got to go." Because I was really enjoying butter. Every now and again, I'd have a load of melted cheese on a burger or something. <clears throat> but um, I said, "All right, I'll do it with you." I didn't think I had any issues with butter, but when I gave up the butter, God, I felt way better. But when you've got really nice grass-fed tallow, you don't really mix uh, miss it. Right. Um, but I noticed some sinus issues clearing up. I noticed, um, well, the fat fell off me. It was ridiculous, really fast. The fat fell off me. The, the dinner must have been creating some sort of inflammation. And I wasn't doing much. It was just a bit of butter. It was not like I was drinking pints of milk or anything. It certainly even... didn't have carbs in it. It wasn't that. Yeah, no, it wasn't that. It wasn't, it, you know, I haven't had milk for like 10 years or something. So it, that was a fascinating experiment that I never intended to do. Uh, but it's taught me a lot, actually. And since then, when I've worked with autoimmune people, I found it's very, very useful to to cut every last bit of dairy out. Jophia says that if you've got certain conditions which are, are very uh, affected by dairy, even a few molecules um, can can set it off. Which is why people go, "Oh well, ghee's all right. It's got no none of the dairy kind of yeah, like casein and the lacto." But yeah, but you'll just get a little bit, and and that's enough. So that's basically what I eat: lamb beef um fish there we go that's about it really i just spoke to someone yesterday who's going carnivore and he had a bottle of olive oil <laughs> go get some ghee instead don't don't saute no cooking that out it's not that's not carnivore you know plus i never met a person yet that had a problem that they knew of with ghee and we personally all as far as dairy goes we use some raw pasture raised organic cheese, which is only legal because it's aged. Have no problem with that. Uh, we do uh, ghee for cooking. Used to use coconut oil, but ghee has a lot more going for it. And uh, we do black market raw butter. Cool. It can, yep. it can legally be sold for pet food, but no, no milk, no, no carby, no sugary stuff, just not even raw. No, I think, I think for 90% of people, that's fine. Even somebody with diabetes, that's absolutely fine. But the people I see are, are on, the, on the real sort of agonizing end of the autoimmune spectrum. And then I think it's really worth cutting dairy out for a, at least six months. 
and then just reintroducing it to C. And you're absolutely right. The one that people have least trouble with is ghee mm -hmm. and then butter and then the hard cheeses and sort of coming down then through the soft cheeses, yogurts, creams, and then milk, which is uh, most people react to. Yeah. Um, and, and, and obviously the more raw you can get any of those, the better. But still, I don't believe we need it. It's absolutely delicious. It's also very addictive. I find that if I put cheese with a meal, I can eat 10 times as much. So really? yeah. my stomach shrunk so much, literally, you know, got smaller, not distended at all. And um, like today, we're going to barbecue some uh, grass fed beef heart. And uh, I think it's a little gamey. So we're going to throw in grass fed, one grass fed chuck steak for me, but the rest of the heart my husband will have for lunch as his main meal, um, his first meal. Uh, for the rest of the rest of the week um and i do slap a big load of raw butter on it eat a whole lot of uh butter but i can eat a certain amount and then it's not a i used to be have a, oh this has to do with i want to ask you if your tastes have changed because i used to hate eggs i hated them when i was a vegan slash vegetarian the to eat a big fat omelet every other day at least and like it is like you have to be open-minded about your taste changing, you know. Um, but uh, I was getting back to that, um, what we're barbecuing. Oh, yeah. I'll have this good-sized steak. I'm not afraid to eat it. I'm not, I don't need to lose any more fat. But I'll get like two-thirds of the way through it, and I'll just look over to my husband and say, I can't eat anymore. <laughs> it's just so satiated so quickly. And I'll actually save the rest to be like part of a mini meal the next day or something like that. But I'm really surprised. I don't eat any volume of stuff. It's just really compact food. Yeah, that's, it's just so nutritionally dense, isn't it? That's, yeah. that's what happens. If, I remember in my days of eating um, pasta and cheese and sauce and stuff like that, you'd go back for a third and a fourth bowl constantly. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you had to eat that much meat, it would, it, it would be a chore. I don't think you could get it down because the body has enough, enough nutrients. But when you're eating pasta and, 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 and stupid tin sauces and stuff, you'll, your, your body will just go, I need more to just try and find some nutrients in this rubbish. Mm -hmm. So you can eat all evening. Yeah, it is weird how, how little you can get away with volume. But as you say, do the ch taste change? Um, yeah, I, I, eggs, even as a kid, I hated the whites. Even all through the years when they said the whites are, is the good bit and the, Yolks are dangerous and all that. All I want. <laughs> Everything's yolk. opposite world. Everything, everything. Yeah. yeah crazy. So, so now I'll only eat the yolks if I do eat them. Or and sometimes I, sometimes very, very rarely I'll think I want some scrambled eggs today or an omelet. But the omelet will have to be, it'll be about six eggs with three of the whites drained away and a hell of a lot of cheese in the middle melted. And that's fantastic. And I can eat that now without bread, which I never used to be able to. I used to think, oh, you've got to have toast underneath it. Or something. You know how I have to, I used to eat eggs just before the vegan era? We used to have to take an um, organic corn tortilla, get it really crispy, fry the hell out of the eggs, load it with cayenne pepper to get rid of the egg, the chicken period flavor, and then put it on that and eat it. Because, and then it's like I destroyed it anyway, right? This is like... I don't know, back in the late 80s. We went hardcore health food in 89. Um, and it's just ridiculous. But now I can, I barely cook them because I don't want to ruin any, especially the lecithin, which is the sheath around your brain. It's your, most of your nerve material, part of the sheath around every cell, which would help viruses not stick, right? Like the vitamin A and all this animal fat, the real vitamin A, the useful vitamin A, um, and uh, where was I? Phil, I have so many things I want to ask you. <laughs> well, have you seen, have you seen the, the, the World Health Organization saying that we should all be eating seed oils and, and not have any saturated fat or meat during the, the COVID outbreak? And what's happening in China? They're telling everybody to eat meat and eggs and fish. I have a list. They're not so daft. You saw my heading, but you haven't. Let me just whip this off for fun, okay? Someone could replay it if they want to check into these. These are the ironic paradoxes of standards and outcomes, including medical false flags, but that's, that's for the second video, pretty much. Okay, EMFs, poisonous electricity versus natural light. Um, salt, 
which our blood our bloodstream is supposed to be mostly salt the mineral salts right salt is critical you can't you can't even have proper volume but i'm starting to get preachy and go into detail let me let me just discipline myself and just and whip these off these are all the paradoxes anti-saturated fat anti-cholesterol uh understanding of macronutrients and that you don't not knowing you don't need carbs because your liver makes sugar all day um carbon dioxide the hype about carbon dioxide and the chemtrails the chemical geoengineering for people who don't know what that is or don't believe it just look up and look at all the x's and crosses and the circles in the sky that fan out into what look like clouds those are chemtrails it's so absurd that this is being sprayed on the whole world and they're worried about your carbon footprint which that plants need the carbon you know and pasture raising an animal does what it handles and there's no excess carbon right i'm still i'm still going into too much detail i'm just geoengineering i mentioned that climate change which was climate warming and climates always fluctuate um and it's not from anything humans do hugs versus social uh, isolation uh which gives you that cortisol spike screws up your metabolism synthetics everywhere um uh, versus grounding and i have to say that's the last time i grounded with bare feet on the grass i got a tick and that was after lyme disease was healed so <laughs> i want to walk on my bare feet i'm so afraid of getting a tick because the rabbits around here drag them in the ticks anyway dead, the lyme dead yeah dead. lyme disease is a that's a whole whole another subject related to the current medicine I've completely lost my fear about that. I remember the last time I had a tick and I just, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't give a damn because I thought for, for millennia, we've been bitten by ticks. What's going on now? It's well, our immune You know about Plum Island and the, the ticks got a little help being virulent, right? Yeah, yeah, I can do. But I, I still think that you get some people <laughs> ticks, they get Lyme, some people who don't. And I'm mm -hmm. sure I was in a state where I would have got Lyme. I might even have had it. That might even have been a component to when I was ill because, um, I, get, yep. I used to get bitten by ticks when I was fishing, uh, you know, out night fishing and whatever. Spent a lot of time outdoors. Now I really don't care. I'm not in an area where there's a whole load of ticks. You know, I don't. It's rare I'll get one, but I never really think about them. And if I do get one, it's not like oh, let's wait for the bullseye rash. Is it going to come up like I used to be? I never had a bullseye rash, and I didn't get it from a tick. No, yeah, absolutely. You can't. It comes from all over the place, and and you don't need the bullseye rash. Yeah, but now I figure that I'm doing the best I can and already and have been for five years been doing probably a protocol that that people recommend to heal lyme disease mm -hmm. so i don't feel very maybe i'm too cocky but maybe that also helps me you know that there's there's no worry about it anymore and and so i i don't really i don't really worry about that i'd probably think about it if i was in some area where you go out and get 10 ticks every time you have a walk i'd start to reconsider it so you know i can't be i'm not being that cocky but where i am in england yeah. i don't think about yeah, it. yeah it'd be like um tick city here with all the water and with all the with all, you be you could come and load it um but um we had remember i mentioned geriatric dogs and which is why it took us about three years to finally have this so-called chat one of them had ehrlichia which is generally from a tick and eventually when he was old that's what took him but because of his raw you know great raw diet of variety and so forth his life was extended as long as possible so i think when it comes to what we hear and what the media or the sources tell us first of all all those uh, tick-borne diseases bug-borne diseases are terrible they're about as reliable to test for as this recent thing that i'm going to only abbreviate cd cv because it's a joke but generally, you know, like even a po the thing is whether he had a false positive or not, or was immune for, you know, like t 12 of his years um, in between, um, you got to go by your experience, right? It's empirical knowledge. You got to go by, that's what, that's what it comes to. It's your body or your children's or animals' bodies. And you have to go by what works and what doesn't. And as the world changes and we change from season to season, from year to year, we change and we have to keep adapting. You know, it's one of the reasons I, one of the things I like about you is I also agree and I tell people, and that's one of the main reasons I wanted to have you on for at least this part of this video was to have a good example and a place to go to for someone who wants to do carnivore or carnivore reset or carnivore experimentation because I suggest that for a lot of people. 
our household, even the dogs were paleo. We had a little bit, no grains, but just a little bit of sour apple and a little bit of carrot mash and other stuff, which we took out. But uh, we were we were paleo for nine years. I mean, you were paleo in between too, right? You yeah, said, yeah, yeah. Paleo. So that cleared out a lot of, a lot of crap right there. And that was nine years. And okay. uh, if we ever get sick, we would probably try uh, pure carnivore ourselves, but we really um, are really careful with the plant food, um, which I want to get quickly. I know we're going to run out of time, at least in this portion, but I want to get quickly back to these, these questions, like other, what other people would think. There's a huge case for what the vegans or vegetarians are missing by not eating pasture raised animal food, animal fat, for sure. All the, you know, the fat, especially the uh, A, D, and K2, the fat soluble vitamins, which they're currently getting in supplement form from, still has to be fermented. And it's kind of the, some, funny, some of these things call themselves vegan, but if they involved yeast or, or, or yeast growth on something, was that a plant? You know, and they'll do honey. That's not a plant, you know. Oh, but, well, it's, it, they, they only do. It then without, if then having none. You know, and they only don't they only do honey if the bees have actually signed a consent form that they're willing to work for the you know I mean you got it it's impossible to be That's vegan it's an illusion it's you can't be nobody's yeah. vegan well my top supplements I mention are essentially mostly from either something that's abundant in the sea or an animal fat when people are actually concerned because I deal with two kinds of people. The people, mostly the people that don't fall for the recent hype of our current events going on with that CV, um, they don't. Um, but the ones who are kind of in between are still a little worried because they don't feel like they have enough information. They haven't studied it for decades like you or me. And so that's why I, 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 I made a video on the and on my, I have a playlist where other keto but not carnivore functional medicine doctors give you stats and also suggestions of what to do which are far better than the, the pharmaceuticals, especially if you're not too far gone, you know. But do you want to say anything else about the nutrients people would be uh, worried about uh, getting uh, on a carnivore diet or that you're worried about them getting when they don't eat enough pasture-raised or sea um, animals? Well, you know, I, I, I hear so many things about... Um, <clears throat> the different vitamins and minerals and the different um, balances we're supposed to have and the, you know, how the RDAs have come about sort of somehow randomly calculated for pizza eaters. Mm -hmm. And they just don't really make too much sense to me. I, I, I like to steer people away from really looking at, at, at those individual nutrients and just say, well, look, look at the ancestral side of it, simplify it down and see what we would have eaten. And nature takes care of it. It's like we, we're always doing things like isolating stuff. Like people say you have to take a load of DHA. Let's take a load of krill oil. And let's, you know, you don't, often you don't even know if this stuff has gone rancid inside the capsules. You well, don't, yeah, yeah. yeah you, don't, you don't know what it is. And, and then again, what did nature intend you to do? Get a fish and suck the DHA out of it? No, the, the, what nature intended you to do was to eat a fish. There are probably cofactors in all of these things that we don't understand. So even taking it down to the individual nutrients, um, you know, they're, they're actually most of the nutrients you'll become deficient in if you're eating a, pr a predominantly plant-based diet because you're not absorbing them. That's right. Even if you're in there. I think, I think the important thing to tell people is that all of these great nutrients you think are in plants are bound up in indigestible cellulose and so you're not accessing them. Plus, while they're going through and all that fiber that causes most of the problems it's said to cure, when that's going through and wrecking your gut, you're not going to be able to absorb them. So if you heal the gut up and, and take in animal foods, even if on paper a certain nutrient is, is, is less in an animal food, you're going to be absorbing more from the animal food and it's going to be healing the gut and the pathways are not going to be blocked as you as you said by the sugars so i i you know taking it down to individual things i think i think if anybody wants to really listen about that it's great to listen to somebody like paul saladino because i have certain knowledge about it but he'll go into minute detail which is mm -hmm. fascinating but in the end it's basically eat local animals and fish <laughs> and if you eat plants avoid the grains and eat them in season 
which means almost none, none of the ones you find in a supermarket. Do you want to hear so, a funny story? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Remind me to tell you the funny story about seaweed, but go ahead. Go no, ahead. I mean, I, I'm, I'm done on that one, really. For me, that's a really simple one. Just, you know, restore the gut. Don't worry about individual nutrients unless you've got some kind of condition that you can have a test for and find out if you are particularly low in something. And then you can find out a supplement or a way of doing it. Like maybe some people are fine just by adding a whole load of liver for a while, you know, boost up the vitamin A, that kind of thing. Um, you, even the vitamin C, there's more in liver. So if somebody's worried about that, they can generally supplement by changing the diet slightly. If there's something else you need to supplement with for a bit, that's great. But you, you need to know what it is that, that, that's actually out of balance and then find out why. I so, have a great guideline. I, I that's a bit of a politician's answer to it. Where I don't want to go into the yeah. individual ones. Number one, because I'm not massively knowledge, knowledgeable like Saladino. And number two, because I just say, eat the whole damn animal if you can. <laughs> right. You'll be fine. You'll get them all. Remind me to tell you something about, or say something, not tell you, say something about the guts of the animal. But um, my, here's my quandary about figuring out which nutrients are ruined by what level and what type of heat for how long right because we were first told even that epa and dha are ruined by heat and, and you won't get to use it out of fish so you have to buy fish oil and by the way if i ever suggest that i'm extremely careful there's only two grams i would recommend and the other ones i see are worse off with but um here's the thing the proof is in the pudding so if you're looking for an outcome, let's say, you know, quality of skin or brain power and so forth, and you don't know whether that fish provided it the way you cooked it or where that fish came from or whether how fatty it was, just go by how did you get better mentally? Did your skin get better? Did your immune system get better? You know, that's, that's what it comes down to because otherwise it's just something that someone else is telling us. And we don't have our own labs to test this in, right? You don't have a lab at home to do all these intricate tests on how much just got destroyed by what. And your great point about the guts, because it's only as good as you're able to assimilate, right? And um, so that solves a lot of those problems. But it is a lot of, those are a lot of questions that people do ask, if they even know to ask them about what happens to the nutrients. But that's where, if you do raw egg yolks, and as a matter of fact, with my dogs, so whether I eat a raw diet, I supplement their diet by getting a little sardine every day, which is from a can with in water. So I don't trust the oils. And um, it's, it's not because of the EPA and DHA, just some extra nutrients from the sea and the, you know, and the calcium and the, the, all the minerals and the bone and so forth from the sea, because I can't feed them completely head to tail. And I'm comparing like their diet to yours kind of because as much variety as possible, as grass fed as possible. I don't want to give them raw fish. I, apparently it's supposed to be pretty good if you freeze it because it can kill the worms, parasites, you know? So I it, even take their meat and freeze it first, just in case everything's frozen and then rethought and done raw. But um, I still, because it's like a kid, I can tell by the outside, but I'm not inside their brain. My husband can speak for how he feels about, you know, how something reacts. I can't. Other people, humans I know can't, but the really little kids and the animals can't. So that's why I kind of go a little bit overboard to try to make sure they have more variety and certain what you would call it supplements. And just to justify a few really quickly, when um, our first generation of dogs were poisoned, it was an act of racism. Um, long story. Next door neighbors, neat, clean, older couple, they kept putting poison in our yard. We were able to ultimately save till old age two out of three, and they were the bigger ones because it was less poison. They sprayed it on the ground and their paws were like on fire and when they licked them, they got it in that way. Um, long story, something like Agent Orange, which the guy used to brag about. Anyway, old, old story, which is what got me into uh, dog and cat uh, nutrition, hardcore back in the like 91. Something going on? Oh, okay. Um, so one thing I used very successfully Back when my husband and I got hardcore into health food and he was dying from asthma and we cured it in a few months, um, which was our vegan honeymoon because it was what we eliminated and all the cleansing. And then with time came the deficiencies. 
you know, so I speak to so many people who are on their vegan honeymoon. I usually talk them at least into using ghee, <laughs> you believe? Ghee and grass-fed beef liver capsules, uh, and perhaps some seaweed, because on land you're missing so many other new, you know, nutrients that are on the seashore or the riverbed. But um, let's see. I don't. I don't do so, that anymore. I don't try and get them to add anything. I just say, I, I just think, well, you know, if they're not willing to turn around, just, just let them go downhill and, and, and at least they'll hit the wall quicker. I'm terrible like that. I just think. It, it took us that, years. I don't know about you, but it took us years. That honeymoon just kind of faded away, you know, and when you feel like you didn't have the proper brain power and so forth and hormones kind of sagged and so forth. When it was before it was from older age, the kind of thing. Um, but what I want to say was to justify some of my decisions based on results was when the dogs were poisoned, I gave them massive doses of dandelion root powder and chlorophyll. And immediately you could see like they had agent orange, like symptoms, like, you know, blown up face and scabby from head to toe. And uh, two of them had a heart murmur, all kinds of stuff. Like, like me with my tetanus shot, not like that, but sudden ill health when I had tetanus shot when I was 16. Last shot I'm ever going to take, but the, this stuff was able to wash it out of the system where I don't think they would have lived long enough for the great diet. Otherwise, it was all carnivore to necessary. In other words, it was used like an interventional medicine. And the other thing is because we don't have a great amount of seafood and even the grass-fed uh, animal products and organ meat that we get as much as we can and rotate, um, because they're not from near the sea, and I'm not inside the brains to be able to understand exactly how they feel, I can watch from the outside. That's why we still, our number one supplement is seaweed, you know. And though that relates to the funny story. Um, there's a certain guy called Fwank, you know who I mean? I don't want to say, I don't like to create enemies and say, you know, trying to speak in code, who uh, had all these issues regarding salt and dehydration and Claim, uh, claim to not, still eats ice cream sometimes, which is crazy. He's supposed to be a... He's a channel. He's, what'd you say? He's a channel. Yeah, he has a YouTube channel. But, of course, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Someone we both know calls him Fwank something. But anyway, <laughs> that was a dead giveaway, so you know who I was talking about. Um, I, assuming he was hopefully a, a honest guy, I got on and made comments on couple of his videos when he was having issues with minerals. And I said, look, if you're going to do something, do see organic seaweed. And you know, a little while later, this very person who claims that people are plagiarizing him. And I have a, my uh, mineral, I mean, a video called the, the most critical supplement and it's about seaweed and where to get it if you're going to use it. And I put it on my dandelion garden and so forth. That's my number two vegetable because both of them are wild. They're not like, bro that's the thing about broccoli and spinach. And all these vegetables, even if they're organic, they're so far from their ancestral roots and they're so perverted, right? So um, anyway, he came out with a video on seaweed. And it, I had to let you know that because he's the one who's calling everyone else jealous and a plagiarist and saying he's getting death threats. But he, after I fully informed him about seaweed and linked him to that seaweed video about minerals, he came out, and I thought when I saw that, it's like, you've got to be kidding. I can't believe it. This is before he was accusing everyone of plagiarizing him. And he acted like it was his discovery. But did I care? I don't monetize. This is my channel is a video reference library for health. To, it's a community service. I don't care about that part. But I was just mentioning the funny story that I didn't know if you guys knew he copied my seaweed idea. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, so. He's he's a funny funny dude, isn't he? He's I I, I haven't had much yeah. contact with him. I, I left a, a message on one of his one of his YouTube videos, and um, I ended up being accused of um, gaslighting him and something. I, it was it was just a perfectly innocent comment. I'm like, what? Do you, are you sure you're replying yeah. to the right comment? Very very volatile, you know. I mean, he's put some really good information out there in yeah. the past. And and I don't I don't have a problem with anybody really at all apart from maybe the vegan high priests I think I think they should uh, they should be brought to brought to some sort of justice because they're damaging a lot of people but anybody else I don't people put it across in their own way so you know one carnivore is different from another somebody yeah. 
likes one guy, somebody likes another. What the hell? I don't care. I, I wonder why there's all these politics. It's ridiculous. That's the nature of people. That's the nature. Well, I've got to say, there's, there's, it, it is the nature of people completely. But there's far fewer within the carnivore movement than, than there is in the vegan movement. I mean, if you go into a vegan Facebook group, they're all getting angry with each other. They got right. no sense of humour. They're, they're arguing about whether somebody's the right type of vegan or whether they've been doing it long enough or whether they're vegan enough. Or mm -hmm. it, it's crazy. Um, and then they're all hanging around attacking each other, waiting for a carnival to come in. I used to pop in and make comments. I was very naive. And you just get, it's like a pack of wolves, you know? You never go in there. Whoa. Well, I just hope that all of the wolves and all of the sheep and all the ones that are neither get to keep saying our piece, so to speak, and we have freedom of speech. Because right now, we're seeing videos, whether they're right or wrong, but usually the right ones, the ones that are more accurate, you know, Finding, figuring things out that are beginning to be really taken down and it's getting pretty serious. So I said, we should all be allowed to say crazy stuff and just let us be able to say it. Yeah, I don't see, I don't see vegan channels being pulled down. You know, you've got vegan gains going on about stamping on babies in push chairs and he's okay with it. But you tell somebody to eat a steak and you get your channel pulled. It's kind of weird, isn't it? I yeah, don't know. but they're not necessarily out there helping with what to do with the immune system if you're worried about this recent paranoid demic and you guys call it a plandemic you know that they're you know they could try to contribute that way you know and tell them go get a vitamin d supplement get a k2 supplement get a real uh animal source vitamin a supplement and so forth they could be doing that right b12 and so forth and certain amino acids they could be doing that and i don't i, I haven't heard any you know that are doing that one more question on this, and then what do you think about ending this and going to the part two, which is about all the current events? Cool. What do you think? Okay, my last question is, what do you drink? And I know you eat salt, but what do you drink? What do I drink? I, I drink, um, mostly I drink um, spring water, glass bottle, so there's no plastic. Um, and and no I drink- tea, No coffee, no, none of that? Well, not because I'm avoiding it, but I never drank it all my life. You know, I might have three cups of tea and one cup of coffee a year, but I don't really anymore. I, don't, I just, I never understood the English fascination with uh, soaking leaves in water. <laughs> I just, I just did. I mean, every time I have coffee or I have in the past, it'll be like that much water and then that much thick cream and a whole load of sugar or honey. All mm. I really want yeah. is a milkshake, you know? I mean, what I, what I used to want was 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 um, just a dessert, really. I, I never got addicted to caffeine at all, <clears throat> which is uh, strange because I'm a very addictive personality. Um, so I'll drink that and I'll drink some red wine and, um, you know, the occasional bit of brandy or tequila. But I basically it's just water, just fizzy water. I, I really enjoy the fizzy water. When your tastes get more subtle, this fizzy water, it's like drinking Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that same kind of satisfaction, but obviously without the sort of Drano effect on your right. on your guts. Um, and and I, like I with lemon juice. <laughs> yeah, fine. Like lemon juice, maybe a little stevia. I mean, the green stevia, the plant. You know. Yeah, yeah, the cool. Powder, I mean, not, not the chunks. Yeah, I don't. I I I used to muck about with stuff like I don't anymore. But if you do, that's great. And I I just don't. Again, I'm lazy, really. I think. Steak in a pan, flipped onto each side, bottle of uh, fizzy water, I'm done. You know, you it's have just... all your little businesses to run and you have to take care of the kids too. So you, you, well, you yeah, keep things like, simple. I'm not, as I'm also that lazy that, that I don't work anywhere near as hard on any of those things that you've mentioned that, that people think I might do. I mean, yeah, some days you get, it goes crazy, but I can always walk away from it if I want. So uh, that's, that's, that's a blessing of doing your own thing, I guess. It's cool. And you're what you consider perfectly healthy now, right? It's other than maybe some old damage, like, you know, yeah. like, like joint damage or something that may never be healed. Because yeah, probably there's, there's, there's a couple of joints that, that might never come back completely online, but no inflammation. No, but there's, there's been structural damage in maybe two joints, but I've managed to get 30 joints completely healed up with no damage whatsoever. So I'm kind of happy with that. And, and two sort of have got a little bit of, you know, like there's one wrist. Here we go. That, yeah. Then that far, but I've got it completely back that way just because I've worked on it. If I really worked on it, I probably could, but that I don't notice it when I'm drumming. So 
it's it's absolutely fine. I wonder so, if you get better with time, just from more time having like the K2 to get that, maybe any calcium deposits out of there or something. Just yeah, there more may be. time on your diet. There maybe. may be, maybe, maybe, yeah. I, who knows? I mean, it's my knee that, that, that I'd love to get really sorted because it doesn't completely bend and it doesn't completely straighten. You know, it's only a little bit. It's like, it's not noticeable. I walk around and whatever. But when I get to something like, you know, I could, I could no longer kneel down and put my heels on my bum. And that's just something you take for granted. Mm -hmm. I mean, God, the days when, when I used to sit in full Lotus for three hours a day, that's not happening at the moment. But I mean, God, when I see what other people have, have had from this, they've been destroyed. And, and I got off very, very lightly, really. If I had my time again, I could definitely get off with no joint damage at all. Well, mm -hmm. that's starting to think about it in 2010. I mean, my wrist always hurt since the early 90s. That was the first joint it hit. But I, it was never diagnosed as that. It was actually diagnosed as Kindbox disease, which is a crumbling lunate bone. When the blood vessels shut down to it, it wasn't that at all. It was probably the same process of autoimmunity from the early 90s. But because of that, that, that one's been going for so long, you know. But I mean, anyone who's got arthritis knows that I wouldn't be able to do that if I had arthritis. I'd be screaming. You know, there's no inflammation left in it. Or, it's just drum, like, or do yeah. your drumming. Yeah, the drumming's great. But I couldn't, I couldn't drum for a couple of years. You know, I couldn't pick up a drumstick. I couldn't put my feet on the pedals and play them properly because my ankles were so bad. Now I, I, there's no evidence it was ever in my ankles. So, so yeah, you can reverse it. I mean, yes, I think if I really worked on that knee constantly with massage, iodine, red light, um, icing, heat, icing, constant working on it. I could probably get it back completely. But God, you know, it, it, you can only spend so long on it every day. When, when I was doing all those massive amounts of healing time, you know, six hours a day spending doing all the wrong things on veganism, I had quite a lot of money and I could sit around and do nothing. But now I don't. So I just don't have the time to sit around and do that kind of thing with my knee, which is why I, my great motivation is to put this stuff out there so that people can heal quicker than I did yeah. and, and, and not, not have all that trouble and damage and whatever and, and not make the mistakes I did because they're probably not in a financial position to do the amount of study that I was able to do, uh, which was great. You know, very few people can sit, apart from now, very few people can sit down and research for 12 hours a day mm -hmm. for years to uncover the bullshit. Um, and then you present it to people and they go, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, that's the funny thing. Yeah. And again, then the proof is in the pudding. So no, yeah. that's what, you know, that's what it's going to come down to is you, you know, we have to experiment on ourselves and be open because things aren't going to, things are, things are not going to stay the same. Hey, um, we covered, I think all, all the most important basics about this. People can see my story, the, um, the keto success before and after, and we don't need to talk about that. But in later, when we're in the next portion, I would like to talk about a current popular medicine that um, is, has a certain molecules in it, very similar to chlorine dioxide, which I used to kill my Lyme disease. Um, and I gotta say one thing related to this diet thing first on this, in this portion is I use that wonderful thing called chlorine dioxide, use it the right way, got educated on it and so forth. And I don't teach other people on how to do it. And uh, it worked. But what healed my nerves? It was the hardcore keto diet, really high in, in the nutrients from animal products that are pasture raised. Because I would say, oh, about a year ago, I'd already gotten to the point where 99% of the nerve damage was fixed. So it didn't heal the damage. It stopped it. You know, this medication, um, a legal one, but a very under, misunderstood one in the U.S. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't heal anything. And I used it for a year and a half, but a few months on the keto diet, which is 75% carnivore or so, a few months on that. And uh, it was like wet foot pain. You know, I used to have to get off my feet at seven o'clock every night and I would cry from the pain. It would keep me up. I lost a lot of sleep, which did a lot more damage. And my husband had to massage my feet to stop me from crying very often in the evening. And I couldn't handle any heat on my feet. And now I get a slight tingle if it's out in the hot sun. That's it. And that's it. No more body flushes, no more uh, adrenal panic feeling attacks from whatever was going on from all this that would come right at the same time that the, um, the, you know, the hot needles would come on the, the hands and the feet. 
that's gone. But I have to say that it was um, getting rid of the carbs and a lot of plant foods and going much higher on the cholesterol and the saturated fat and the, uh, and the, you know, the egg yolks and, and it doesn't have to be butter or ghee, the butter or the ghee and the, and the thick marbling on steaks and so forth. At age 61. Um, at age 61. But it worked when it, it's been almost three years on keto now, this summer it will be, but it worked in the first few months of keto, hardcore keto. We have still never, have we ever cheated husband? No. You call your wife the missus. He's the mister. We have never cheated one day, never felt like it because we did it right. And um, in the few months of keto, did more than nine years of paleo. And then both were real strict, you know, still not cheating. So that needed to be part of this video. And I don't have an individual one on the line. Um, it's mentioned in my um, keto success before and after story. You can even see me with a, with a nebulizer mask on with my hair all fried passed out on the couch and there's I put that embarrassing picture there and an embarrassing picture when I was fat but not my fattest in a bikini chopped my head off of that picture to humiliate myself to try to motivate other people and maybe some people and I do suggest a lot of people to do keto at least for I mean carnivore at least for reset and then this fits in right now with the next thing I want to ask you or the very last thing was um, can you tell people um, we can put in uh, links to the description, but can you tell people all about you, where to reach you, and how to get help, even if it's directly or through your videos, like right now, if they want to do carnivore or carnivore reset? Sure. Well, um, I have a Facebook group called 100% Carnivore and Beyond, which uh, only started for about five people, and now there's about 13,000 or so in there. So very, very knowledgeable people in there, quite a, quite a few of them doctors and all sorts and 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 great great it's a good crowd we we have a laugh in there it's not uh, it's not very serious a lot of english nonsensical humor in there um i have a website at pureactivityoneword.net where you can find uh my autoimmunity course my 30 video online auto autoimmunity course my books and um consults and whatever which i do for people <laughs> And ebooks. I have an uh, an ebook as well on uh, <laughs> frequently asked questions about carnivory. But the thing that I'm the most proud of at the moment is the Human Unleashed one word, yeah. humanunleashed.com, where I've teamed up with uh, three geniuses and Je Dr. Jeremy Ayers, Graham Norbury, and Ben Hunt. And we've got, I think, about 80 hours of, of material on there at the moment and expert interviews and all kinds of stuff that we do on every aspect of all of this, the light, the EMFs, the, the diet, the you know, just so much all, you know, and also now with our, our chats on the whole CV current events. They're excellent. I must say they're excellent. The number nine was the, I think the most useful for the person who is a major thinker. And then your number 10 you just did, I think was a great introduction to what's going on. And I would suggest all you people at least go check those, check them all out, but check those oh, thank two you. out. They are developing actually. We're, we're doing another one tonight. I mean, every, every day something comes out, but most of our work, we've, we've neglected most of the membership stuff there because wow. we're working so much on, the, on, this, on this CV stuff and putting out all these talks, but um, they're free. And you can also get 30 days free to the Human Unleashed anyway at the moment. But, but check them out because it really is developing. And I mean, particularly Graham and Jeremy, they're such amazing researchers. You know, I'm more on the diet and light side and emotional and spiritual sort of thing. But, but the way that they've studied the lead up to this whole crisis and exactly what's going on now and their understanding of politics is way beyond me. So I sit there like a, like a lemon and listen to them half the time, but they're, they're utterly brilliant. So, so drop in and check it out. We, we've got a lot of stuff to to uh, to reveal on tonight's one as well from our inside sources which can't uh, wait to see it or hear it <laughs> it'll be fun it's always okay. fun